Okay, so moving on from the underside and the white layers, we've got it all masked up and we're ready to tackle the top coat, which is it's supposed to be AS. It's calling out for AS16, which I don't have, but an equivalent to that is Tamiya's XF19 which I do have, so we're going to use that. Now, I, as I said in the last video, I'm going to use the trigger airbrush to paint the top coats on the airframe. So I'm just thinning the paint a little so we can use it straight from the, uh, from the bottle. So, standard Tamiya X28 thinners. We've got the paint. Let me get some kitchen towel because we're going to need some of that too. And we are using the Galeri 68 trigger brush. Now, I did say it was fitted with the 0 0.50 needle and nozzle. And we're going to fit the 0.38 needle nozzle because we want some fine control. Very, very easy to change the needle nozzle. So take the end off the airbrush, retrieve the needle, crown cap comes off. You have to excuse my gloves, they're wet, uh, covered in white paint from last night. And the air cap comes off. Now the air cap has the nozzle in it, so you just keep them together as a unit because the, the 0 0.50 air cap will have a different size aperture as the 0.38. So Galeri give you a, combin a combined set. So here's the 0 0.38 air cap. Nice bit of packing foam in there. And it's always good practice to mount the air cap and nozzle before you put the needle in the airbrush. That way you avoid bending or straining or just generally damaging the airbrush. So that goes on and a reasonably firm twist. Make sure it's well seated. Crown cap back on just so we protect the needle as we put it through. Now I did thoroughly clean this airbrush last night so it is okay to put away. Uh, big mistake if you don't because you'll end up with a very dried paint in your air cap and nozzle which means it might not work properly for the next time. Needle out the needle container, take the cover off. Needle's not as polished as the 98D so it'll be interesting to see how the paint flows off this. Last night if you saw in the video I had no problems whatsoever with paint flow on the using the 98D, you're putting down the white colour. But anyway, needle goes in, just firmly put it in. You don't need to push it hard, just slide it in gently until it seats. You'll feel when it's seated and tighten up the needle retaining screw and rear on the end of the airbrush. And that is us good to go. Uh, 0.50 needle, get the cover on it. Because you want to look after this stuff. You look after your stuff, your stuff will look after you. And back in the box with the rest of the kit. So that's how easy it is to change your airbrush from a 0.50 to a 0.38. Um, very, very simple and, a, and so much easier now. Galeri have got a self-centering nozzle in the air cap. Um, leagues and bound, leaps and bounds ahead of any IR water airbrush that you need to use a spanner to change the nozzle on with such fine thread they can easily damage. Excellent. Right. Give me two moments to get the compressor fired up and we'll get the airbrush loaded up with paint and we will look at getting going on putting down the top coat. Okay. So airbrush is ready. We've got air. 
Now what I always like to do is we'll just put in a small drop of X28 in it just to make sure that we don't get raw paint down the nozzle and then we'll load up with color and it has been stirred and thoroughly shaken and I still managed to spill it everywhere hey ho why change a habit of a lifetime make sure if you do spill you clean off the airbrush not only does it keep it uh, neat and tidy but it will avoid dropping paint on your model as you're spraying right once you've done that we can take the the little rubber cover we got and slip that over and gently with a bit of backflow that will mix the thinner and paint that's at the end uh, of the nozzle and then we'll put the lid over it to avoid any other spills now it's very important you'll see there's a hole in the uh, top of the lid that needs to be kept clear at all times because um, as you spray there'll be a vacuum formed drawing the paint out of the color cup down through the nozzle and if your holes blocked up then that can't form the vacuum and you will you'll not get any paint flow so let's get the model now much like last night we're going to go for a primary coat of marbling and then we will look to lay down um, a unifying coat on the top uh, the beauty with Tamiya kits is you've got fantastic panel line detail and it gives you a great canvas to paint so there we go starting as before we're looking to put down our little squiggles as random as you can stay within the panel lines and as with last night I I think we've got the paint mix just right for this airbrush we have beautiful flow and with the trigger we've got excellent control now I've seen a few folks saying they don't really like the feel of the trigger airbrush because it's something they're not used to but I honestly think trigger airbrushes definitely have a place within the hobby marketplace and not only is it for good control but for anyone that's got maybe some health problems with arthritis or joint problems I think trigger airbrushes will be far easier for them to use than a standard top trigger airbrush where you push down and pull back for paint so although this is a dual action airbrush you only have one action on the trigger i.e. you pull back first stage pull you get air second stage pull you're gonna start getting paint delivery and with a bit of practice for anyone that's not used to this type of airbrush you'll soon get used to it now I don't use I've had a lot of trigger airbrushes in my time um, and to be fair I haven't used them to the fullest of their extent I have the Procon Boy trigger airbrush which I use it's got a fan cap so I use it for large area painting um, and that's all it has the 5 mil needle nozzle so it's quite a it puts down a lot of paint and this will be the most accurized airbrush I now have for doing detail work and to say that I'm happy with it, it is an understatement I think this is actually performing very very well so we've got the same level of control as we did with the 98 and it's a very comfortable position in the hand and just by changing the attitude of the aircraft to match the attitude of the airbrush in your hand it's a very intuitive painting system I've got very good visibility so I can see where the paint's going down and as you can see we are getting some very 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 fine line details for our marble coat 
the sky grey is a nice light grey colour, XF19. So it works well for the marbling technique that we're using. Vis a vis, I think if I was doing a freehand camo, I would be able to spray in that no bother at all. And the other thing I've noticed between this airbrush and my Procon Boy is the Procon Boy is, how would you describe, very air hungry. So it needs a compressor that can put out quite a good CFM, so that's cubic feet per minute. Um, and this airbrush isn't using as much air as the Procon Boy does. It's another plus point, so it'll be easier on your compressors. So, I think you're getting the general idea of what we're going to do. What we can also do, if we look on the fuselage here, we've got some raised paneling. We could do a similar technique as what we did on the underside. Instead of doing the marbling, we can do hold the airbrush a little bit further back and we'll do a blend. So you want a solid front end here. Blend it back along the panel, walk that blend up the front edge, blend that back along the panel, and fade it in to create the contrast towards the rear of the panel. Again, go back to the front of the panel and sharpen up the front edge so you want a good solid opaque color. And then we've left the back of the panel darker and we can do that here on this lower section and that gives us a little variety in our paint finish and to be fair you're probably not going to see this when you finish because this is where the exhaust streams come and they're very very heavily exhaust stains these aircraft but it's just a different way of painting in panel colors we can maybe do that on the air brake as well to to give you different tonal variations and give you a bit of interest in the model now when you when you come in to paint on mast areas you want to make sure you're 90 degrees to the mask to avoid any paint bleed going under the mask and you can just spray a mist coat over and you want to be spraying over the tape and the aircraft itself if you need to take the airbrush back a little and add a broader spray line you can and that bring will blend in nicely your, your camo color. Right, so I will now off camera complete the rest of the pre-shade marbling and then we'll come back and we'll look at the top coat. Okay, we're back and we have the marble coat laid down. And I have to say, it's been no problem whatsoever with this airbrush. I'm really quite impressed with the control I've got over the trigger and the amount of paint going down. So we've got all the different bits of tonal variation in there. All the panels are individually picked out. Um, and then that should give us, when we lay down the top coat now, a nice bit of tonal variation. So we'll go back to the wing we started with first. Start the wing route. And we want the airbrush a bit further back uh, what three four inches away 100 mil from the surface of the model and we want to be putting more paint down but in a lighter coat walk it back and forth over the wing and it's a beautiful thin layer of paint going down and we'll build up the opacity of the paint so we can retain the pre-shading underneath we'll go longitudinally over the wing Again, just gently walk it over the surface of the wing with the edge of the paint right down and then making sure we get the flaps because they're obviously at a different angle. And when we're happy with the layer of opacity, make sure that we retain some of the um, pre-shade underneath we stop. I think this needs one more pass. If you, if you want, you can pick out panels individually if you want to highlight them.
just so you get the finish you're happy with and I'm happy with that a little bit of tonal variation in there overall a nice block color so let's move on to the other wing get the wings done first and I always like to start in the root of the wing just so we can try and avoid any vortices that cause uneven paint drying and you get the sort of coarse paint finish in there you'll notice on this panel here I haven't actually put any pre-shade in and we're going to hopefully get a different tonal finish than the rest of the wing just for a bit of difference right so we've gone across the way we do longitudinally walk it back over the wing Make sure to cover the flaps and then back across the way. Nice coverage. Make sure we go along the leading edges, although these leading edges are going to be masked because there is a silver leading edge to be painted on this plane. And when we're happy, we leave it. A little bit of individual work. We just have just enough of that pre-shading showing through. So, down to the nose of the aircraft, and we're going up and down on the fuselage. And then over the top. Over the canopy. Other side, same again, up and down. Right, so a slight interruption there. Back onto it. So we've got the front done, and now we're doing the side. So if we go the underside of the stabilizer first, and just bring that down, we'll go the lengthways of the fuselage to start with, just so we get the mask in strip evenly covered, and then we'll go back to the up and down motion. Laying down a very fine, thin paint layer, gently building up that opacity. Make sure we get the leading edge of the tail. We get the join between the tail and the horizontal stabilizer. Bring that down over the horizontal stabilizer. And it's, it seems to be that two passes pretty much gives us the opacity we are looking for whilst leaving just a little bit of pre-shading in there to break up that sort of monolithic finish of the aircraft so back again go under the tail go along the mast finish and get up under that joint there so we want to get good paint coverage and then we'll start walking it down the fuselage sides and using this trigger airbrush I personally am not finding my fingers fatiguing hold on the compressor is turned off I've got to turn it back on we're going to run out of air let it charge up a moment. So come back in here and we'll walk it back along. Make sure we get good even coverage on the spine of the aircraft. Longitudinally if needed. Leaving a small touch of that pre-shading in place just to break up the panels. And we'll get the tail, top of the tail, right down the leading edge of the tail. And there we go, I think. I think I'm happy with that. Make sure we just touch in here 
along the masking so we do have a good solid paint finish at the end and there we go one painted aircraft in not too long of a paint session just make sure we get the canopy in all angles and there we have it yeah I'm actually really happy with that and I'm really really happy with the airbrush that's performed beautifully so what we need to do now whilst we have it all masked off if we look at the painting instructions so we have I'll use this pointer so we've got the anti-glare strip to paint in which is matte black and then you have decals for these walkways they don't look too difficult to spray in so we may just spray them in as well um, I don't know I might use the decals but we do need to put in the anti-glare strip and that comes up over the front part of the canopy and the other thing we need to do it's not so easy to see on these instructions but the leading edge of the wing on the underside of the wing and the upper side is chrome silver so we will need to take the masking off and remask the wings to get that done so what I'll do is we'll maybe mask up for the anti-glare strip we'll change the paint out in the airbrush and we'll come back and spray in the matte black here and then we'll disassemble it unmask the front of the wings and remask to put in the silver leading edges so give me a moment and we'll be back okay we've done a quick color change in the cup now what we can do if we don't want to brush paint to repair scratches get post this note post it notes and you just hold it down along the demarcation line there we go instant repair same again here we are not needing much paint to get that blended away so gently hold back and lay in the color until you're happy with the overall finish you can hold the brush a bit further back and do a bit of an area spray and that's gone um, we'll just put another touch in here I think actually what we've had is we've had a bit of paint lifting so again lay the paper down and a spot finish and it'll look you know in the in the whole scheme of things it'll look like um, Grand Cruise been touching up the paint where you've had a bit of paint chipping. So same on this side. Maybe not the best camera angle, but it's the best angle for work for me. Is lay down the paint shield. Um, blow in the demarcation. Gone a little bit over on the black. I'll just touch that in with a brush. And there we have it. Now, the last thing I need to do is laid down because this is very very flat finish i've got to do quite a bit of masking on the leading edges for the silver leading edges and we've also got a decal um, and i want something just to seal this paint is i'm going to give it a, a gloss coat uh, we've got tamiya's uh, x22 get that in frame x22 clear we're going to lay down uh, so i'm just going to finish touching that in and then we will get the gloss coat down right so we've fixed the um, the anti-glare shield and we are now ready for our gloss coat so you've probably all seen this before but we'll just see how it goes down with this brush so walking down the spine of the fuselage you want a nice even wet coat down the side there we go get the tail horizontal stabilizer now this gloss is 
probably thinned about 50-50 with Tony Rex 20A. Walk it down the wing. Make sure every area has had an even coat. Don't flood it. You don't want any runs. You just want a nice even coat. And then obviously as we lose out of areas to hold, we need to be a bit more careful. All right, down the side here. Leading edge, tail, horizontal stabilizer. We need to get underneath, gripping the wheel well so we can get underneath and down the side there. We'll just make sure we've got that side done properly. Longitudinally along the side of the fuselage and then over the wing. Uh, we dust over the top and we're done right I need to get this dry before we think about demasking and I'm probably going to get it dried with a hairdryer but I'll do that and then I'll get masked up for the the Legion leading edge silver edge and we'll come back and lay that in okay we're back and <clears throat> we're fully masked up so we've got to put a silver leading edge on the horizontal stabilizers and on the wing so following a combination of the instructions and the picture of the built kit by Tamiya, we've got this laid out. 6mm Tamiya tape to mark it out. And then to do the bulk of the masking, what I use, and I highly recommend if you can get it, I think you can get it on Amazon, is a tape called Tessa Tape. It's a high-grade paint and decorator's tape for edging work. And it's the closest thing I've found to actual Tamiya tape. It's got the same level of adhesion uh, without being too strong to pull paint off. And it's really, really cheap. You can get it in uh, this size and you can get it in a really, really thick size for larger masking projects. So if you can find it, highly recommend it. Anyway, back to painting. We've got um, Tamiya's XF16. Uh, so that's flat aluminium. And that will be a direct replacement to the AS12, I think they call that in the instructions. So I'm just going to get my gloves back on now that I've finished masking. And we are at the same pressure. The paint is thinned, it's stirred and thinned. We're not actually going to need very much paint at all. a few drops in the color cup definitely we want to put the top back on the paint because we don't want to spill any over our nicely finished model that we've worked so hard to get to this stage so get the paint pot lid back on we'll give the color cup a quick wipe off get the cap on and we'll do a little bit of spray out. I'm just in the pitch and towel. Happy with the spray pattern. Now, as with all metallics, just fine thin coats. And I'm being very careful how I'm spraying because I don't want any overspray anywhere. We don't want it because metallic overspray is an absolute pain in the rear to get off. So. down onto the masking from both top and bottom there we go it won't take much to cover it's a very very small area remembering if we maintain our 90 degrees then we'll get a hard mast edge direction there and it's laying down beautifully right tail planes I should have moved this paper out of the way because the tape is sticking to it so same again a 
And when you can see the paint going on the masking tape, you know it has covered the model. There we go. One quick blow in over the leading edges. And I think we're done. Right, here's the interesting bit. We've got to unmask this. Um, and I'm not going to do it on camera because it's going to take a little while because there's a heap of masking tape here. I'm going to completely unmask the model and we'll come back and see how our paint has gone down for the whole model. So give me a couple of minutes and we'll be back. Okay, we're back and we are fully unmasked. And here we have the model totally painted. Nice bit of tonal variation on all the panels. We've got the control surfaces in white. Maskings come out very well. Nice demarcation lines. We flip it over, we've got a lovely tonally varied underside and we've also got our silver leading edges. You can see them reflecting, done beautifully. Let me just stop the compressor a moment. So, gallery airbrushes. Well, there we go. I'll get the two airbrushes. So you've seen in the first installment, the underside's been painted with the uh, 98D. And then you've seen me swap out the 0.5 mil needle nozzle assembly in the 68 trigger airbrush for the 3.8 mil, uh, 0.38, sorry, mil needle nozzle fine assembly in the 68 to do the top. And I think, um, as can be seen, they both work fantastically well. We've had no paint stoppages, dry tips, or anything like that. The level of detailing we've managed to put in is really nice. The control with both airbrushes have been fantastic. And for a first use, oh, excuse me, minor incident here. And for a first use, I am thoroughly impressed. Um, I have to say, um, Chinese airbrushes have got a bit of a reputation, but these airbrushes are completely head and shoulders above the bulk of um, airbrushes coming out of China at the moment. The engineering is very, very good, and that shows in the level of paint finish I've been able to achieve. Now, I'm no high-end painter, but I can, I, you know, I've, I've developed my skills over many, many years. Um, I pretty much exclusively use Tamiya XF paints. And as a robust acrylic paint system, it works very, very well. And I've had no bother at all um, moving between airbrushes. And this shows here with these Galar airbrushes that they're able to do the, the job beautifully. Um, I'm very impressed. So where we're going from here then, Basically, what I need to do is get this aircraft decaled um, and then we'll get some of the underwing stores done and, and get it sort of completed. And I will film it because I've got this far, so I may as well continue with the build. So the next part in this, this little mini build series will be decaling. We'll see how I do that because time your decals can be notoriously difficult. So we'll, we'll give them a go. I am planning on doing... This paint scheme here, which is the CVA 14 uh, VA 52 Night Riders, um, and that's um, April 1964 um, USS Ticonderoga. Um, so that's the scheme I'm doing. I'm not doing the usual one with the the Hornet, as everyone does that. I quite like this, um, and we're going to do a full loadout of underwing stores. So we'll have the fuel tanks I'm assuming they're napalm tanks um, they may well be fuel tanks so we'll have three big tanks and then a wing stores full of the bomblets but anyway we'll cover that in the next installment so 
From here, it'll be deckling, and then we'll do final fit out and some oil weathering on it just to finish it up. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, or suggestions, or questions, just pop them in at the underneath the, in the question section underneath the videos. And if you'd want to like and subscribe, always grateful for that. Till next time, guys. Take care. Happy modeling.